pink and we can go white. Okay, hey, Johnny, uh, can, can you can you check your sharing? No, can you share just to make sure that everybody can you share? Yeah, uh, let's have a look. Where's the thing that I'm sharing? Right, okay, so. I can't even see it right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay, guys. So we're going live on YouTube. I'm sharing that and we can start. Just give me like uh, one minute. Because we need to tell everybody that we're wife. Otherwise, we're not doing anything. <laughs> You guys can chat until you're waiting for me. That's, I that's don't hear music, so every time, every time when I'm when I'm running the the, the webinars, uh, do you hear me? Yeah, I hear it. Okay, every time when I'm running webinars, I always get something wrong. You know, like like yeah. either the the YouTube live don't go live or the, or the Facebook live don't go live, and then goes out on Twitter live, but not on LinkedIn. You know, it's uh, I, I don't know. It's it's always the same. You know, now I want to know where are you live now, Nick? YouTube always. That's for okay, sure. YouTube, YouTube, will always get it right. Yeah, I'll, I'll always <laughs> use YouTube. I mean, if it's so you don't, don't go anywhere else, it. like you don't go anywhere else, live as well. Oh, okay, interesting. No, no. Because so you have just like you... three or four options, I think. I know, I know. Always YouTube. You know, see Facebook. I mean, I know. Okay. Facebook is on Facebook. They always send me like some <laughs> new pictures and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> it's not for business. So, anyways. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're live on YouTube. Alex, you know, he said that he's going to join. I guess he has some issues with connection. So uh, we're live on YouTube. I'm going to share the screen and we can get started. So, okay. Perfect. Let's see. Okay, do you guys see my screen? Wow. Are you beginning, Nick? Yeah, I always uh, begin. <laughs> I, I, usually, I always begin and finish, but today is going to be a little different because I'm, I'm st starting to do it as quickly as possible just to, to have more information, like more time for the other speakers, but I'm going to speak after that. So, hey, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. Good evening. Good morning for you guys. I know that you're everywhere. We're going to do the first webinar from the expansion series. Now, the topic today is e-commerce expansion to Europe and the USA smashing for brokers with one simple solution. It's not simple, but we have a partner squad who can make your wife much easier. You know, the speakers today are Alex Friedman, founder of WAPI, Hi Mac, uh, founder and CEO of uh, Eva Guru, Jonathan Stacker from uh, Vanquish, Omar Angry, CEO from Margin Business, and Ricky Hooker, uh, general manager from Gobo Ecommerce Experts. And I'm Nick Penny, if you're uh, host today. I'm the partnership manager at Hell Tax and the co-founder of Extreme Power Brands. And like always, you know, we have some sponsors who are helping, out, helping us to actually get more exposure to these events. Today, we have our platinum sponsor, which is Viably. They're a funding company. They can help your shop from the US. They can actually help your shop to go from US to Europe with their uh, revenue-based funding programs designed specifically to provide online sellers with funds they need to achieve their expansion goals because without money, sometimes it's hard to do what you want. So they're going to help you out with that. They have a giveaway uh, only for the webinar attendees and the people who sign up. Uh, Viably Growth Capital is offering 15,000 receive an, addi an additional 1K free, which is a fee free for the first time customer only. So if you would like to expand in Europe, they can provide you the funding that you need for that. Then the goal sponsor today is actually not one, but the so-called expansion to your partner squad. Hello Tax, Viably, Eva, Link My Books, Hello Tax again, Com Complizone, WAPI, Airwallex, and Margin Business. So these companies are the all-in-one expansion to your solution, VAT, accounting automation, product compliance, logistics, customs translation, product research funding, uh, reimbursement, FX bonuses and agency recommendations. So just keep in mind that each brand who would like to expand to Europe or to USA, actually I haven't typed USA, but you can qualify if you're going to USA, you can get up to or even more than 3,000 per brand. These are discounts from all the partners here so we can make your wife easier because everybody's going to say, okay, but I don't have the money. Okay, that's why we're going to give you the advice and we're going to uh, give you some money or actually discount so we can actually make the next step. Uh, our 
Uh, Silver Sponsor is Extreme Power Brands. That is my partnership agency. Uh, we do, we provide the partnership a service and we have a network of thousand plus more than thousand companies which are e-commerce service providers. And what we do, we help companies to grow through partnerships. Each month we offer one free give, one, one giveaway, a free partnership audit, and you need to be an e-commerce service provider to qualify. We're going to tell you if you're great or if you suck. And we're going to be honest because we don't need anything from you, just your website. And the last but not the least is our bronze sponsor, Dobias. They're our content partner. They're an award-winning creative service company from, Am from Amazon servers that designs product infographics, EBC images, and videos. They're giving away free complete sets of EBC images for free, value $600. So that's enough for the sponsors. Thank you again, guys. No, we cannot do it without you. At least we need your money, that's for sure. So thank you for that. Uh, and of course, here is the agenda because I assume you guys don't came here just to watch my pretty face. You know, I, I put makeup, but anyways, I mean, I'm sure you're not here for that. So here is the agenda. First, I'm gonna start first. I promise I'll be very quick. I'm gonna outline what you need to know about the expansion to Europe and the USA. Multiple blockers, one partner spot comes to the risk and I'm not joking. Then. Hi from Eva is going to talk about how to maximize Amazon profitability when you're expanding to new markets. Because if you have revenue and you don't make profit, I mean, you don't have like an excessive, excessive funds which can invest to do expansion. So profitability is the most important. And so he's going to teach you how you can actually do that. Then Johnny from Vanquish is going to talk about the power positioning for a successful global expansion. What Google won't tell you, you know. Of course, Google is not going to tell anything, but he has been doing that for a long time. He has been doing that for his own brand, and he's doing that for a multi-million dollar brand right now. Then, Ricky is going to talk about the total end-to-end -to -end solution to expansion for, for Europe for three simple steps, compliance, logistics, online distribution. This is you now their bread and butter. So this is what global e-commerce experts are doing, expansion to Europe. They're the experts here. Then. Alex from WAPIC is going to talk about how to optimize fulfillment and logistics costs when you expand to Europe and the USA. Because after VAT compliance, the next thing that you need to take care of is logistics. And the last, but not the least, is Omar and margin business. Know your customers and speak their language. Because you don't, you're not going to say anything. Enhancing marketing effectiveness on global e-commerce platforms for localization. So the keywords are here, language speak their language and localization. Of course, at the end, we're going to have a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, comments, feel free to type them in the chat or the Q&A session, and we're going to answer them in the end. If you have to leave, don't worry. We're always recording our webinars. We're streaming live on YouTube as well, so you'll be able to watch the recording. We're going to send the follow-up tomorrow with the giveaways from all speakers and sponsors and the recording and the breakdown for each session. So a list. OK, what's up? OK. So uh, Europe, you know, everybody knows that Europe is great. The summer is approaching. So it's a great vacation spot. There is no doubt about that. So I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. You don't mind going to vacation in Europe. So you don't mind spending money in Europe. But some people are not actually uh, are actually worried about selling in Europe. So if you spend money here, you should at least try to make some money. It's a huge market. You have more than 450 million new customers. Europe has 3 million e-commerce brands compared to over 9 million in the USA. So we have three times uh, less brands, which means less competition than the USA. This is like a crazy fact that is from my man, Steve from Marketplace. This, this. Only 2% of Amazon sellers in the USA are also selling on Amazon Pioneer, which means on all Amazon Marketplace. So if you're an USA seller doing well in the USA, and if you're not selling in Europe, you should know that 98% of your competitors are not selling in Europe. So it's too early. Even if you're selling in the USA, it's just one market. The, the world is big. Europe has almost 50% higher population. And the one thing that I'm not mentioning here, Europe has the, uh, like the highest average order value. So you can actually do very well with high value uh, products in Europe. You're going to be selling to 50 new countries. And of course, like I said, if your competitors are not doing that, you'll be the first one. So uh, it's a huge opportunity. And the last but not the least, uh, selling to a whole new continent, to a whole new market will allow you to source more products so you can actually reduce the cost from your supplies and manufacturers. So uh, it's actually another thing that you can think of. So what are the blockers? No, I'm going to 
come quickly for those because our speakers are going to cover them in more details. The first and the most important thing is having the right product. Without product, you don't need me, you don't need hi, you don't need anybody else here <clears throat> because you have nothing to sell. So the first and the most important thing is to have a product. Even if you don't have a product, you can use tools like Zongo and other product research solutions. I, I believe no, uh, Ricky and Global Ecomore experts are actually providing that. So you can actually do research and you can find the product that you're gonna sell. If you have an existing product, you can use these tools to research which markets are good for you. What is your competition? In some tools like Zongo, you can even see how much is your estimated uh, investment to expand to those markets. So use the solutions, make a research and see which would be your market, go to market in Europe. Then the second part, let's say you have the product, what you should, uh, need to know. So the next thing that you need to are the, are the following things. Value added tax, which is like the sales tax in the States, product compliance, fiscal representation in some in some markets and customs and logistics. The first thing that you need to check in Europe is product compliance, because if you need to so actually get a certification, sometimes you need to wait a few months. So this is the thing that you need to check before VAT. So once you verify if you need or don't need that, then you go to the next step. You get the VAT. The VAT takes two to four months, and this is where Camel Tax is going to help out. Now, this is what we specialize in the VAT compliance for e commerce sellers selling in Europe or European sellers selling outside of their home country. For the product compliance, we have a partner who can help out with that, who has been managing the partnership for uh, the compliance for a war, one of the largest aggregators. Fiscal rate is something that you might need in some market. It, it is required by the tax authorities, but that's why you need advice from companies or health tax so we can guide you to go to markets where fiscal representation is not required for non-new companies. Customs and logistics is the next step. And this is where WAPI and Tricky from Global E-Commerce Experts are gonna talk about in Europe. And HAI is gonna talk about that in the States and also WAPI. And the last but not the least is the culture and language bearer. This is where Omar comes into the picture. You know, I've been selling across Europe for 10 years. I was I, I used to run a private label supplement business. And I know for a fact, if your translation is not correct, people are not gonna buy your stuff. So this is very important. And still the AI tools cannot do it as a local person can do the translation, the localization. So this is your mini action plan. These are the steps. And like I said, you just need to be brave enough to try it, you know. And just to give some more information about health tax, because we're the people who are solving the VAT compliance. So what we do, what problem are we solving? Like I said, if you're expanding to Europe, you need to be VAT compliance, and this is where we help out. But you also need the right partners, like we have some of them today, to help you expand to Europe. This is a really simple solution. And contrary to what Amazon is going to tell you, because if you go to Amazon, Amazon is going to say, okay, we're going to give you a free VAT, uh, and let's do the money. Okay, don't listen to Amazon. No, Amazon makes money from uh, like from clients. No, so the more VATs you have, the more you're on the if you're on the pioneer, they're gonna make more money, but it's gonna make your life harder. So in this case, this is why we recommend everybody start small and scale. To expand Europe, you need just one VAT in UK or Germany. I strongly recommend Germany for a few reasons. They accept documents in English. There is no fiscal representation in, in Germany, which means less compliance, uh, less fees on your end. Germany has a specific tax authority which deals with uh, US only companies. So for example, UK companies are gonna get the VAT for than US companies, which is crazy, but this is the reality. Chinese clients wait a lot, but US clients have priority. The last but not the least, actually two more facts, they're located in the center of Europe. So they're an ideal dispatch fund. Uh, point from the logistic point, point of view. And the last but not the least, for example, Amazon Germany is the third largest marketplace in the world after USA and in Japan. So uh, this is what you need to do. Product components, we have a partner who is gonna check on that. Omar, they're gonna check your translation and localization. Kai is gonna help out with the reimbursement because some people don't know that, but Amazon might own you a ton of money. So if you don't know, you have never tried to uh, claim them, so you might have a big pot of money waiting which, which you can use to fund the, the expansion. And the last but not the least, we have Viably as a partner to help with the funding if you're based in the USA. If you're based in Europe, you have another partner who is not uh, uh, here today at the webinar. So 
Helotox provides the VAT compliance, which means that we're going to set up your VAT, we're going to connect your, your Amazon Shopify accounts, we're going to pull your data, we're going to do your digital VAT returns and everything that you need to do. The only thing that you need to do is deal with your business because you actually outsource your VAT compliance and you take care of your business. And the last but not the least, now we have a software. You can check it out here. It's it's cool. It's built by the founders of Helotox, which are ex-Amazon sellers. I used to be a client of Helotox, by the way, before I sold my uh, business. So I know for a fact why this is Helotox sellers. And I think that's it from, from us guys who are giving away, as always, six pre-VAT registration. The total value is over 2,000 US dollars. You just need to add the monthly or annual subscription for a VAT compliance to qualify. And of course, we have more discounts from our partners. But if you'd like to get more information about how to expand Europe, book a call with me. We're going to send an email with my booking link, or you can actually email me at np, like nickpenefithealthtax.com, and we can get you started. So that's it, guys. Let's see. Okay, 15 minutes, and Alex is here. Alex, thanks for seeing you, man. Yes, hi, hi. I, I'm already here for some 10, 12 minutes. <laughs> okay, man. Okay, man. That, that's good so i, I nice hope to that see was... all of you guys okay yeah. okay I, I was quick and you know i summarize everything so right now you guys need to go into depth of what i just discussed so hi let's start with you man profit is is the most important thing my wife never asked how much revenue i make she asked okay how much profit do you have so if always listen to your wife she knows <laughs> what is the most important but of course hi is a true wizard of amazon He's going to introduce himself. We know each other for a long time, but he has one of the best uh, tools for Amazon. And I'll let him talk more about what he does and introduce himself. So thank you, Kai. Thanks for joining. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, and uh, also, you know, hi to everybody. Omar, John, Alex, Ricky, great to see you again. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the profits. And I would like to make it really very clear about like five uh, ways to increase your profits on Amazon. So uh, after 15, 10, 12 years of um, selling on Amazon uh, for the last four years, I am uh, managing Eva. And Eva is a, a technology company, also an agency that focused on increasing traffic, conversions, and profits uh, across Amazon, Walmart, Etsy, Wayfair, and Fairy. So we are now an omnichannel platform. And uh, today we talk about the profits. Uh, and why do you need profits? Because a lot of people now also asking me whether they should expand to Europe or they should expand to US. And because of the economical situations, they say, hey, maybe we should not do it now. But here's the thing. If you can increase your profits, you can use that money to expand and grow because the e-business, e-commerce game is always about growth, but it's about profitable growth, right? If you don't have the profits, uh, you're going to lose money by growing. So let's talk about like these five uh, killer uh, strategies for the next uh, 10 minutes. And uh, let me start with, um, and I'll show you a little bit about the EVA platform as well, maybe just 30 seconds. So uh, first, you know, one thing that already, um, uh, already Nick mentioned, if you have your, um, you know, VAT registration done, your company is there, you know, you are ready to export to US or Europe, you definitely need a 3PL. So in US, um, we are serving a lot of European customers. Uh, we have three three PL uh, three PLs three PL warehouses in Houston, uh, in uh, tech in, in Houston, Texas, uh, in New York, as well as in uh, in the California area. So we cover both East and West Coast. And Houston is super important because we also have a returns management uh, facility there. I would like to talk about the returns management, but also our partners in this call. They have the warehouses in Europe, so you are all covered for Europe and US So with this call. So that's also very important to mention. Now, uh, in terms of returns, if you are in Europe and you're expanding to US or vice versa, you are not physically present. You don't have a warehouse. And unfortunately, with some of the items, especially if you have a lot of variations, if your items are priced over $10, 
the returns becomes an issue and the returns uh, you know kind of vary be between maybe three percent up to even 20 percent if you are in the apparel business now what happens is like if you let amazon to automatically uh you know kind of take care of the returns unfortunately a lot of your stuff will be disposed which are pretty much either they are new or like new. And this is one of the things that we saw uh, with our returns uh, management facility, because it really it's really like a 50 cents thing to send it to our returns management, where we inspect every single return. And very surprisingly, we are able to send the items back to Amazon at a 70% rate in the new condition, which means that just to give you an idea, which is very common with US shoppers, but it might also be applicable to Europeans. Uh, somebody buys a large item and an X large item. Obviously they kind of the large fits to them. Okay, so they just return the X large, goes back to Amazon and Amazon checks it, dispose the item, waste of money, talent, time, I mean, it's really, it doesn't make sense, right? If it comes to our warehouse, we check the item, maybe we repackage it, send it back to Amazon. Now you have your returns covered. So this can increase your profits by three to 10%. And it also depends on the price and the product, but in some categories where returns are higher, it makes a lot of sense. And if for the others, it still makes sense, you're not doing anything. Somebody's covering all the returns for you. So um, another thing that maybe you should be looking at is in a new market, you know, you're know, you going to have the search engine optimization done as well as the, uh, the PPC done. So what we are doing is with EWA, we have an AI-based uh, platform where um, we are able to uh, almost 80% automate the all campaign automation campaigns as well as creation and bid optimization and why i said 80 percent i mean by the way i'm a computer engineer with the background of ai for the last 24 years now and i can tell you that the context requires you to have the automation as well as a ppc specialist the best approach is always to have the hybrid approach but at this moment 80% of the things on the PPC can be automated. And if you can use uh, the automation combined with uh, an expert, then you can reduce the PPC agency cost by 50% and you can expand to multiple markets. And uh, you know that's where also you can get support from my great friend Omar, because yes, we can immediately replicate and start selling in Spain, in Italy, but there is always a bit of a localization required because every market is different. The translations not always work. But in terms of AI, I mean, it it's kind of like finding all the keywords, whether it's in Italian, Spanish, French, and uh, we have the PPC specialist, which they are, their local language is uh, you know, basically they 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 speak the languages of that Amazon market. I think that consolidating the SEO and PPC and using the AI automation, whether it's EVA or not, can increase your profits by 20 to 30% and reduce your ad management cost by 50%. Now, the, another thing which a lot of sellers are not using very much today, only maybe 5% of them are using it, including maybe at least the top 20 Amazon sellers in US. I'm talking about the guys doing 100 millions of dollars. But actually, this technology is available even if you are doing $5,000 a month. You can use dynamic pricing to increase the profit margins. What we do with EVA, again, it's another AI tech, not like the one that I mentioned about ad optimization, but this time, the AI works to find the best price every day, meaning that if your demand is increasing, the prices will increase. If your inventory is low, maybe the price will increase. If you are spending money on advertising and maybe you know the system will say, hey, I should keep the price the same because this guy is spending money on advertising. So the sessions are increasing. So there is a lot of things that 
uh, can be done with the price. And I always get this question, whether price is important, whether we should focus too much on advertising, whether it's SEO. Hey guys, it's a combination of all of them. And advertising gives you traffic, which is great. But that's one of the reasons why I don't like a PPC only approach because pricing it's on its own will help you to increase your conversions, which will indirectly reduce your advertising cost as well, right? But at the same time, if you know the best price every day, that helps you in to increase your profits by five to 15%. We have done this with almost 200,000 SKUs so far incredible results and i'm being very conservative with that five to fifteen percent now let's continue with another one that nick mentioned it's about reimbursements i think that maybe 60 to 70 percent of our audience knows about reimbursements now it's not like three years ago where people were not aware of it what it means is um amazon fba there is a lot of areas that some mistakes happen, like during the inbound shipment, you send 100 items, maybe Amazon receives 98. Now, normally, that two items are lost by Amazon. Now, they should pay you that, right? Actually, they should pay you the whatever your sales price is. But sometimes these payments are not done. What we do is like we uh, look into more than 30 cases. And we make sure that not even a single penny is left on the table. This includes, for example, checking your remeasurements, ensuring that like your, um, your the package size, I mean, the FBA fees are right for your remeasurements. It also includes like if the customer returned, like claims that they returned something, which means Amazon will automatically refund them. But do they really return something? And even if they returned, did they really return the right item? What happens with warehouses and all the things lost when it is in transit between pan-European warehouses, which always happens. So reimbursements is typically, we can recover two to 3% of your business. Now, the key point is we do it at a 13% a recovery rate, recovery commission. So this is like a 50% cost reduction compared to any other reimbursement company in the market because we believe you know we can even further reduce the cost as an Amazon advanced partner and it will help you to uh, increase your profits by another 5 to 7%. Now that money you can use uh, to expand into Europe or in US. And uh, this happens in every single market, even including Japan, Australia, all European markets. It's applicable globally to every single Amazon marketplace. Another one is like, I mean, we always, I always talk about like a four pillars that every Amazon seller should look at, which is traffic, pro, uh, traffic, conversion, profits, and availability. So how can we avoid out of stock. So that's one of the biggest problems. Now, it's a combination of a lot of things. Now, you are expanding to Europe. You use like a Vapi Warehouse 3PL or e-commerce experts, but at the end, you the, having the 3PL helps you. Now, the second thing is you need to know for which product, when to replenish the Amazon FBA, especially if you are utilizing FBA, which makes a lot of sense because it's cheaper, better. That's the way Amazon wants you to do things as long as your product fits into the FBA. Then if you are able to use, uh, you know, what we do is like a single click replenishment forecasting and AI optimization algorithm this time. And I talked about AI now three times for dynamic pricing, for uh, advertising automation, as well as now to avoid the stuckouts. And uh, with that, in one single minute, you will see what needs to be replenished every week uh, on, the, uh, on the Amazon FBA, which will avoid the stock. Now, in case you're not able to avoid the stock outs, you can still also use the dynamic pricing will automatically start increasing your price 
to delay the stack out, to give you some space, some time. But at the same time, because the price is increasing, you're going to be doing an extra profit as well. If you can avoid this, 10 to 15% profit increase. So um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but the key point here is you need to come up with a strategy which covers traffic conversion and profits all at the same time, rather than just focusing on one of it. That's the EVA philosophy. And uh, here is like a few uh, of the screenshots, but what I will do is like, I will just go into EVA for 30 seconds. And uh, the idea here is even when you have the EVA dashboard and you connect your store, whether it's in UK or Germany or in Japan, doesn't matter. You're going to have the full view of like what's going on with your profit because you have your cocks, advertising costs, profits, expenses, and you can see all the details of what's going on with your sales. And uh, that's at the store level. But even you can go into a single SKU. And for a single SKU, you can even have uh, like a visibility of like what's going on with every single SKU. So hopefully I'm able to show that to you. Uh, and let me just like click to one item. So for example, here you see this one single item where what's going on with your profit and margin, your sales, but also like the profit details for every day. Not only that, a lot of sellers don't look into, for example, what's your sessions every day? What's your sales data? Even the key, key performance metrics like ACOS and TACOS and also reimbursements, refunds, and inventory management. So having that type of visibility is very important. First, you know what you need to know. And then the second, you take care of these five killer strategies. If you implement them, hey, I said 30%. If Because I thought maybe you're going to pick one or two or three. But if you do all of them, you can make it to 50%. So thank you very much, uh, Nick, for the time. And uh you know, thank you. If there are any questions, happy to as answer them as well. Okay, Th thanks, Hal. That, that was short and sweet. And now we're gonna have Johnny to talk about the expansion to the US in more details because that's what Johnny does now. He's an expert in that, but he's not an agency. He has kind of unique service and he's gonna introduce himself and he's gonna tell more about what he does for Econ brand. So thank you, John. Thanks, uh, right now. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Johnny Staker. I'm CEO of Vanquish Commerce Group. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years or so now. Um, learned everything that I know through first-hand experience, and you know, I'm still doing that now. So, uh, for example, we were one of the first companies back in 2015 to launch um, in the US under Wayfair's pilot scheme. So, um, but back then, of course, there was nobody to to hold your hand and guide you. So you had to figure this stuff out through through trial and error, really. Um, we're obviously also very strong, you know, support everybody here in terms of um, launching in the EU market. Um, however, you know, there's others here today to talk about that. So we've, uh, you know, decided to focus on the US today um, and talk a little bit about um, you know, briefly about the opportunity, the challenges and, you know, solutions available really for, for a US expansion. So if I could just share my screen. So <clears throat> just a, a, a whistle stop really for those people that are, you know, for, for the European and British people with us that, that are not aware of the, the size of the opportunity. So um set to be a 1.1 trillion dollar e-commerce market um versus about 768 billion in the eu obviously there's varying statistics out there but this is a a fairly um reliable source set to be 1.7 trillion by by 2027 um 268 million uh online shoppers so potential for 268 million new customers if you're not already in the market um, with the major advantage, particularly to, uh, well, not necessarily, but uh, for British brands, I was going to say, but one language rather than the nine or, or more. So 
if the EU is a is a fragmented market, the USA represents a more cohesive way to enter, a, you know, a, a much bigger market. And we've only got one story to tell. Whereas if we're selling in Europe, um, you know, we've often got multiple stories to tell depending on the audience that we're talking to. Um, uh, so uh, as far as we understand from the data, there's about 50% of EU sellers already active, um, sorry, active in more than one EU country. Um, and only 2%, so similar to Nick's figures on Europe, think it's roughly the same in reverse, uh, as far as we can tell. Um, only 2% of EU sellers are actually active in the USA at all. So I think the same the same expansion uh, fears exist both ways, really. Um, and, you know, Americans seem to perceive EU and British made products as higher quality. In, in many cases, we like to think that's because they are high quality. And, um, uh, you know, there's also a strong cultural attraction to to products and brands that are from across the pond. So um, the UK has about 160 billion in e-commerce sales. Um, working your way through there, Germany, 90, France, 60. Uh, Netherlands, we've kind of stopped at the Netherlands with, with 22 billion, but we could have gone on. So looking at those types of figures, um, the opportunity in the States represents probably, you know, between a 10 to 45x per SKU or ASIN opportunity to grow um, and expand the market, which is, you know, clearly significant, whichever end of the spectrum. Um, and although very competitive we're not going to try to suggest that it's not um the usa you know represents a, a blue ocean, blue ocean market of sorts for uh, strong european brands um uh, and strong you know strong british brands with the right entry strategy um the challenges everybody's facing now you know 2023 more so than ever is you know the current market or our home market is you know, more and more saturated. Um, there's increased ad spend and there's reduced demand. So all of those things uh, come together really to create the, the perfect storm that nobody really wants. So without obviously dwelling on the negative, that's not, you know, we're here to look at solutions. And, you know, there are only two ways really that, that anybody can grow an e-commerce business. One is through new SKUs, greater ad spend. Another is through new markets. Um, um, the challenge with new SKUs, of course, is that 70 to 80% of them fail uh, when, brought, when brought to market um, and the cost to bring them to market, launch them and build velocity has been enormous. You know, we, we've talked about, um, I think somebody just talked about re generating reviews and how difficult that, that initial process is. So, to get to that and have a SKU fail is obviously a high cash flow risk, um, inventory cost, stocking, you know, holding product. Um, so in my opinion, you know, more marketing and more SKUs, particularly at this time, is not the immediate answer to growth. Um, we're all looking for the fastest cash cycle. Um, so a solution, a, a more... Um, palatable solution has to be new channel or new country. So if we take the USA example, we've discussed that there's, you know, 10 to 45 X growth opportunity per SKU. Um, and the beauty of that is that we're taking to market a proven SKU. So we don't have the same risks on that item. And in most cases, we'll endeavor to port those reviews. So um, reviews are portable, not just not just Amazon to Amazon, but you know, there's tools out there to port to port reviews from across into Target, Walmart, um, Wayfair, Overstock. So we can take that with us and take the credibility with us, which gives us a very strong foundation when entering a new market with with an existing SKU. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously, some of the pitfalls that we see um, are that 
Um, excuse me. <laughs> Went down the wrong hole. Um, so, yeah, so some of the issues that we see are, are the fundamental things where I think that brand founders like like myself, like I was years ago, we kind of go at everything in terms of we'll give this a go, we'll throw some money at it, we'll have a gamble, and we'll kind of bootstrap things and do it ourselves. The issue with that, uh, when it comes to expansion, when things are more critical, is that we make fundamental mistakes. So we fail to assess the opportunity properly. We're making guesses. We don't put in place an action plan. There's no market research as such being done to minimize risk. Um, huge things like the legal, the regulatory stuff, tax filing. You know, we've had people come to us that um, have have you know accrued hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax bills uh, that they weren't aware of because they didn't uh, set up right in the beginning um uvp something that we touched on has been a fairly strong topic uh, at the beginning which is a unique value proposition so you know the the us market really does um, seem to value a story and a brand over a product so they're looking less for features and more about a brand story so um we tend to see this a lot where brands will just enter with a product and think it's just about selling a product um and and it's not it's really about stacking that uvp up and understanding the importance of of um how we're perceived and what our story is in that market um and of course pricing critical we often see mispricing, so we don't allow for multi-channel. We've gone in with an Amazon Play, and we've we've realised we can't accommodate other channels, um, and and of course discounts and allowances, which are uh, you know equivalent to chargebacks and so on, um, unexpected fees with Amazon, all these kind of things that eat into our margins and make it very difficult to reprice from, um, and enormously. Um, I think there's other people will talk a lot about fulfillment today, which is great. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest ones and one of my biggest mistakes early on was fulfillment. So coming into, um, you know, 3PLs based on promises made by them and what they could do, uh, but they couldn't comply with fulfillment requirements, different channels. The location was wrong for the, the entry of the goods and so on. And it, again, can run into the hundreds of thousands to put something like that right. I know this because it I've had that happen to me exactly that. So, uh, but failure in all of these areas often means a lifetime lost opportunity. So very seldom will somebody have another go at it once they've entered a market and, and failed. They will say they're, they're pulling out. It's, it's no good for us, which is a tragedy uh, when it's such a strong opportunity and could be avoided um so you know covering off and getting all these things right through planning foundational setup power positioning diversified sales distribution pricing fulfillment onboarding and then specialists in all areas to, to ensure these things go to plan is absolutely crucial um when entering the u.s market and and you know of course any market applies just the same to the to the eu um so there's two options, two ways we can do that. One is in-house, the other is outsourced. So we can look to build a team, um, but good quality talent is is rare these days. And, you know, those guys are working for themselves and building their own empires. So it's difficult to do that. So we end up with smaller teams that probably miss opportunity for growth. It's costly, uh, time-consuming and risky. Um and then conversely, um, outsourcing that is, you know, a hell of a lot of different specialisms that we've got to stack and stitch together. Um, and that's guesswork again as to whether these guys are going to be able to do all of the things that that we need we need to be done. Um, find the warehouses, still need a management team to oversee this stuff. And then, you know, we've seen upfront costs run uh, well into and over six figures without the pitfalls and things going wrong. So what are the alternatives? 
there are obviously accelerators, people like Patton and Spreetail, both billion dollar revenue companies now that will buy your inventory. They will control your brand entirely and use their own infrastructure. Um, sounds great, but the, the issue is that it's available to only about 0.1% of all e-commerce sellers right now, purely because the criteria is so strict. I think uh, Patton is probably 5 million um, home market one channel sales in order to be considered. Um, and you've got your aggregators, which obviously uh, will buy your business, fully own that business and utilize their infrastructure in a similar way to the accelerator. The challenge, of course, being that only uh, or less than 1% of e-commerce businesses are actually acquired. So there's a there's a huge hole in terms of the 99% that still need a solution to expansion, um, particularly something as complex as international expansion. So uh, a better alternative um, or an alternative, uh, having identified you know few solutions for that 99%, um, is uh, you know we see agencies obviously don't know how to launch in new markets or seldom know how to do that. And accelerators and aggregators don't want to, they want a proven concept. So we, you know, we saw a gap in the market through our own experiences when kind of looking for a solution. And so at Vanquish, we do what others don't want to do. So we'll do all the 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 hard graft in the background that um these people won't do. So we uh before we come on to kind of what that solution looks like, um we're in favor of channel ownership so uh, the accelerators want full control and you're giving that up to them that's okay for some not criticizing that but we believe in channel ownership and facilitating brands to to own the channel um and we don't necessarily believe in amazon as a pure play there's still 61 percent of the market up for grabs worldwide um e-commerce so you know we we promote um, a strong multi-channel um, strategy, uh, which obviously diversifies risk and opportunity. Um, and of course, a huge advantage to that would be a, a one partner solution through setup um, and into growth management. So obviously uh, we've presented some uh, opportunities and challenges and being here today you know we, we offer a solution to that so um just very briefly so vanquish offer a couple of things there's there's uh, the gtm game plan initially which covers all of the things we've discussed so we don't think there's anybody uh, on the market right now with something as um um structured as as we offer so it's a very um proprietary framework um, which delivers a, a guaranteed outcome. So starts with a very in-depth, holistic, bespoke strategy plan, which involves timelines, KPIs, all informed by market research, works through uh, the done-for-you legal regulatory tax, trademarking, brand registry, everything that needs to be covered off foundationally, um, into re retail-compliant facilities. So... 3PLs and warehouse networks that we know can do exactly what we need to do per channel and follow our um, standard operating procedures. So there's no risks in terms of warehousing. And then, of course, working through the rest of the things on screen without going into granular detail, because I think I'm probably running out of time. Um, so we handle all of that. Um, we also offer a, an importer and merchant on record turnkey solution for those of you who perhaps don't have an appetite for, um, you know, the setup process. So all of this is done in a, in a very structured way over a set period of time. Um, and often our partners will then follow on with Ecom Alliance, which is our um, growth partnership program. So everything's done as shared success 
So it's very much win-win with our partners. Um, and by that same token, we choose our partners carefully. So we're not just, uh, you know, churning over um, accounts, really. We're looking for uh, long-term partners that we can really add value to. Um, and in that relationship, we handle everything from monthly tax filing and reporting, um, obviously all US-based, um, multi-channel account management, fulfillment management, um, and into ad management customer support there's various elements of this where we utilize partners that we've um, built up in our network over the last 20 years so you know that you're getting the very best really that's that have, that's been vetted um throughout the process so a very very quick you know when i when i wrote this this morning it could have been a ted talk before i actually um edited it so i've got that down to as, as briefly as i can bit of an overview on us um, and we're here to answer any questions and any more information I think there's an email going out and you know be absolutely delighted to to hear from anybody that needs help so thank you for your time and thanks Nick thanks Johnny and guys you know, I'm going to summarize it in a few words you know if you need to expand to USA you know you go to Johnny even if you're an agency because the agency guys why he said they don't touch other markets because it's hard of course it's hard that's why we have people like Johnny and me and some other partners because if we do the hard part then you do the easy part which is not as easy but you know what Johnny is doing it's probably kind of unique you know I like, there is not that many companies who deal with that because you know there is a lot of blockers. But see, I learned something new. I had no idea that uh, US you know is not overcrowded. I had no idea that only two percent of you European sellers are also not selling are also selling in the states. So it's too early, you know. And I'm gonna steal some of his information from my future webinar. I, I do that all the time. So a great presentation, John. I know that uh, he needs to leave in like ten minutes. I uh, had something scheduled for a long time ago, so he won't be staying for the Q&A session. So if you have any questions for John, uh, feel free to uh, actually email him after the webinar. We're going to send uh, his information. So now we're going to have Ricky Hooker and we're going to cross the big pond. I'm not sure if we call it like that, but we're going to come back to Europe again because the people who are selling in the USA and they're not selling in Europe, they should li listen to what Ricky Hooker and global e-commerce experts are doing because they're your one-stop shop solution for European expansion. So thanks, Ricky, for joining and thank you for waiting. But by the way, we're very quick, guys. Last time I had the all-women webinar, you know, each one was speaking for 30 minutes. So we're quick, like, uh, like who? I don't know. I'm not watching, right? Uh, so, okay, Ricky, thanks again. Uh, it's your turn, man. Nice yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me. And uh, John, those um, uh, the details there for the USA were were fascinating, mainly because, you know, of course, the journey that comes into the UK and EU has so many similarities and yet so many uh, differences as well. So for this part of the talk, I want we, we wanted to talk a little bit about overseas sellers from outside the European uh, geographic region. Uh, just share my screen um, to enter the EU and the UK market. So as opposed to what John was talking about in terms of uh, European sailors going to the US, this is literally the reverse if you're watching this webinar and you're coming in from the outside. So thanks for having me. My name is Ricky. I'm the GM at Global Commerce Experts and uh, the business has been around for about a decade and has grown 2,000 or more sellers into the UK and the EU. So I think... Um, some of these stats you've already seen we've got this huge market as as the guys have said uh you know the numbers are relatively mixed um uh, in terms of the accuracy but let, let, let's just lay it out there's a massive opportunity from the uk market from the u and from the european market and i'm splitting those two things up because of course a few years ago for whatever reason the uk decided to leave europe we're still in the same place we're still geographically in the region but we're no longer in no we're no, no, no longer in the EU, and as such, makes the comp the situation slightly more complicated. But 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 by no means um, something that should be shied away from. The reason being, the UK market is enormous and actually um, out 
performs much of the European marketplaces, um, even combined in some cases. So for a seller that's coming from outside uh, the European area, it's certainly worth considering doing uh, both the UK and the EU regions at once. And for some sellers, uh, certainly for coming from the US, who are dabbling into uh, global expansion uh, from the outset, the UK market being uh, the same language, uh, or although not the same language, uh, but the same language is certainly slightly easier to get the ball rolling. So we are specifically here talking about the European marketplaces, as opposed to, as John was talking about, the uh, the, the, the US market. So the well-trodden pathway, hey, look, as I said, there's there's some real similarities there of what that looks like. You need to start by doing your market research. You need to start by becoming compliant. Um, and that's tax compliance, label compliance. We'll touch a little bit more about them. Uh, you need to get launched. You, know, you need uh, somewhere to fulfill them from. You need to promote and, um, uh, and, and all those pieces in there. So the expansion journey itself, that fundamental back, Bone of expanding is very similar than it is expanding to anywhere anywhere else. See what the scope of the of the opportunity is. Make sure you're allowed and you can comply, and then get stuck in and go and do it. So those those pieces um, uh, are the same wherever you want to go. What global e-commerce experts does is joins all that together into one organization. Uh, very little way of in, in in terms of partners of taking and holding uh, the hand of those the, those sellers into the European market. So uh, let's go into a little bit more detail about what feasibility is. Look, some of this has already been covered, so I'm not going to touch on this touch on this too much because what we're talking about here is understanding the scale of what we've what you've got, um, understanding how much you can access in each different country, understanding um, whether or not your your products are suitable. Most products are going to have some degree of suitability. If you're an American seller and you sell uh, cowboy boot spurs maybe or gun racks for a pickup truck maybe you're going to be slightly limited in terms of your market in europe but beyond that um it's a case of um the size and scope of what you're doing so once you're feasible um you of course as nick said you need to get a good vat partner to come up with your your vat uh, and beyond that some uh some compliance when it comes to address services a responsible person uh depending on some product categories uh, and nobody's mentioned DPR yet, so I'm pleased that that's on my slides. Can no one's mentioned DPR yet? Uh, but the um, the environmental regulations that's another another taxation for some countries, France and Germany initially, other countries around Europe uh, expanding. Uh, and the, and the the address service and responsible person service involves a degree of label checks. Amazon in particular super hot on labels, making sure your labels are labels are checked, got the right barcode, got the right ingredients check shown. Uh, got not got any banned substances, that kind of stuff. So the compliance piece is a big part of your of your setup. Very important that you're not having your SKUs taken down. And then once you've launched, hey, look, um, this thing, you know, we've we've talked about it briefly. Uh, an omni-channel approach or a multi-channel approach uh, pays. Yeah, absolutely. We love those love those numbers. Um, Sixty um, plus odd plus a percent of the e-commerce market off off of Amazon. Most sellers who come in from outside of uh, from on, on online marketplaces from outside uh, of the UK, predominantly we're talking about American sellers who have been successful on Amazon because the marketplace is so large. But uh, that's not exclusive. You might be uh, you know, selling D2C from a Shopify uh, site. You might um, not be selling an online marketplace. Place. But nonetheless, you're preparing yourself, choosing the right marketplace for your products, sorting out your payments. We're going to talk. I'm sure one of the my um, the other guests here will talk about payments later on. Choosing platforms um, and making your listings, transferring your listings onto new marketplaces and translating. And um, some really interesting pieces there in terms of translation for non English speaking sellers and the types of gains that can be had from. Uh, from your um, A plus content, your back end content being properly can, uh, translated, your SEO being properly translated, and any regional nuances that might come from, for instance, um, additional opportunities that come from some countries. There's little tips like huge Turkish based speaking uh, population within Germany, for instance, and, and and having some paying some regard to that, making big differences. But certainly, translating your listings um, is a big part of that marketplace launch. And then of course, if you're ready to ship and you've done the business, uh, as John said, in terms of 
uh, moving goods into the region. You need to work out how to get them into the country. And then you need to choose a good uh, 3PL fulfillment partner. Uh, we have an in-house uh, shipping team um, who are very specialists in uh, the in e-commerce shipments. What does that piece look like? I'll just keep sticking on the on the, sh the shipping for the moment. But what does that look like? Well, if you're an FBA shipper and you're shipping directly into FBA, you might want to ship by air. You might want to ship by sea. If you're going to ship by sea and you're going to ship by pallets, you might want to decant into a 3PL. You might want to ship some of your goods by sea, but to avoid stocking out on your listings, you might want to skim the tops of those pallets and send some of those goods by air directly into FBA. Um, but what what was absolutely um, uh, important is that you choose a shipping and a custom, shipping and customs clearance agent that understands that if you stock out on any of these online marketplaces, it's pretty bad news. And importantly, it, and can give you give you shipping advice commensurate with storage index in FBA with using a 3PL, with choosing a 3PL, which is close to uh, a suitable shipping port, with using shipping routes that are going to come economically into the countries that you're shipping into. So when it comes to those 3PLs, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Global Economic Commerce Experts has its own 3PL in the UK and in the Netherlands. Talk a little bit about why that is very shortly. Um, but uh, as, uh, as John said, there's big differences in the way uh, 3PLs um, uh, work. There's big differences in terms of their service levels, in terms of how they're prepared for e-commerce, how they're prepared for fulfillment, what kind of software they're using to collect your orders and your connections, and, and the way that they're handling returns. Well, Hi has already uh, talked about how you can look after your returns, how those goods are reworked if they are returned, and how you're buying those and presenting those, for instance, into FBA, uh, or in or skimmed off into ones and twos direct to direct to um, sellers off your own website, and that of course will be necessary if you're taking an omni-channel for channel approach. You'll have one set of stock typically, and you'll need that stock prepped for either a D to C direct to consumer model um, in uh, you know in single items on a final mile courier, or indeed um, through um, it, through the FBA system, whether you're an FBA seller or a vendor seller. So I think Alex is going to touch on what that looks like with European multi uh, 3PLs and five mile couriers later. So uh, I won't skip um, across what those those two those pieces look like too much because he'll have a lot much better information of what that looks like. But suffice to say, you're thousands of miles away, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. You're going to need someone to look after your stuff. Choosing a 3PL is very important, and choosing the location of that 3PL, uh, as John mentioned as well, is super important to make sure that you can get your goods to market. You get a very high proportion of next day delivery opportunities if those uh, if those uh, should wish to exist. So we have got um, we have a three PL facility in the UK which handles stock supply to the UK, and then you would ship uh, goods separately uh, into the Netherlands to our three PL facility in the Netherlands to handle the European market, and you can then access FBA fulfillment centres and. Um, uh, and the final mile career network from from that point onwards. So that does mean that you have to access the UK market. You are shipping goods separately, separate VAT number. Um, Nick and the team at Hello Tax there can obviously get you uh, well squared away with all those uh, all those numbers that are required. Or indeed, uh, using international one stop shop. If you're not selling on a marketplace, you're selling off your your own website. Um, uh, and what that piece looks like in terms of. Uh, of collecting the VAT at the source where, of, of where your goods are being stored. So we're dealing with both of those parts uh, with clients who are both selling off a marketplace or selling um, from uh, selling on 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 directly from their own website. When you move on from there, what you need then is someone close to hand who can help you through uh, promoting what that bit looks like. And actually. Uh, a little bit of um, extra value for anyone listening to this is a QR code there to help you get a free account health check of your existing sales, which you might use as a little bit of initial spot feasibility to understand the scope of your products within the UK and the EU market. And if you're already selling in the UK, uh, perhaps explore some of the other opportunities of an omni-channel approach. So scan that QR code uh, uh, are on that on the screen there if you're interested in, uh, in getting in touch to have an account health check on us uh, for watching uh, this webinar. Uh, beyond that, of course, you need to be able to coordinate uh, alongside someone who knows 
how much stock you've got and where you are, because you're in the, within the same fulfillment uh, centres in the UK and in the EU, uh, handling your uh, account management or ongoing account management, looking after your deals and things. Because very often for those sellers, they're very off, they're very busy with their business overseas, uh, and they need some support in uh, replicating that success using the techniques that they're already uh, become accustomed to into into the UK and the EU market. We're always big believers, um, as and, and uh, really pleased that John had already made this point, big believers in an omni-channel approach, not just using a marketplace, creating your own website content, gaining control of, of your data, gaining control of that Dream 100, your top customers, uh, supply source uh, sources, maintaining and being able to resell to the existing clients, being able to build up your own business model within these countries rather than leaving that to the marketplace itself and having some repeatability. So uh, that, store, that store piece fits hand in hand in terms of uh, GE's uh, account management piece in terms of looking after and hand-holding uh, those clients uh, into, into the region. So we've been doing it for a long time. The business has been going for 10 years, but within the business, there's 20, 25 years of e-commerce, marketplace expansion uh, and international trade. Uh, so we're well accustomed to what it takes to uh, build e-commerce brands into the region uh, and handle the you know the inbounding and, and looking after what that stock looks like. From that, look, it's churn, it's rinse and repeat. Let's churn, crank the wheel, add more marketplaces, uh, add more platforms, uh, and, and bear in mind at this point you haven't added any new SKUs. These are. Uh, as high or and, and Nick had already talked about, these are the products you're already um, uh, you're already experienced in. These are the products that you've already know you know a success. You've done the product uh, um, development for. You've spent the money. You've made the investment. All you're doing here is cranking into into a bigger market, new countries, make more translations, get a new uh, VAT number, um, become compliant for that particular country. Although across the EU, the product compliance is all uh, is all harmonious. So once you've got access to one country from a product compliance perspective, you have access to all of the countries uh, in the EU. So a real opportunity there to, um, to add significant, significant growth to the business. And when we're building out a strategic plan with a seller who's wanting to enter the region, uh, we typically tell them that with, uh, with the right kind of strategy and plans, uh, the right kind of products and maybe uh, a bit of a uh, bit of fair wind behind them. You could well be doubling your U.S. sales if that's where you're based initially uh, by using the European market. Simply because uh, there's actually there's more people, there's more people to access, there's more savvy buyers than you've got at home, and the market is simply not quite as saturated. So massive opportunities um, uh, to be had from the region and. Um, we offer, we offer a complete one-stop shop internal golden ticket. It's uncanny the amount of services sitting on the golden ticket there that uh, that John was talking about. We do all of that in one piece from the, the planning, the setup, onboarding, fulfillment, distribution, growth, and account management on there. If you want to quote, there's a, there's a QR code there on the screen. Uh, this will work both before uh, during the live uh, broadcast and afterwards if you'd like. Uh, to find out more on on that front, so a one stop shop to European growth. So that's that was real a real world stop because I know that some of the other uh, total gurus uh, on the panel here have already covered some of these things. So I went pretty quickly, uh, but suffice to say, uh, the components of international growth into the region uh, are. Uh, or, or, or certainly the blueprint for growth remains the same, irrespective of which country you're going to. So um, uh, I think between um, Nick and Hi and, and and John and Alex, we'll have given you a, a really good insight into what you need and the type of investment. Now, for Amazon sellers, I will just write at the end here, Amazon do offer a an incentive scheme or a discount scheme for entering new markets. If you're a US seller, and we'll be pleased if you get in touch with, with GE, we're happy to give you uh, the link of how to access that in Seller Central. There is a discount of about 5% off of Amazon selling fees, which you can use to enter the UK in the, uh, in the EU market, even if you're an existing seller. That's uh, that's valid for up to $800,000 of GMV, for your first $800,000 uh, of 
of sales in Europe, you can get a five hundred sorry a five percent discount off the fees. To put that in perspective, the cost of European expansion of bringing your goods into the into the UK and the EU would rarely rarely outweigh five percent of eight hundred thousand dollars. It's not just not going to be that much. So in effect, coupled with uh, some of the tips that High has given you in terms of increasing your your margins. Uh, this could be this. You know, this is a real opportunity here to grow to a new market without actually um, taking any money out of your bank account, uh, or certainly uh, investing fairly in in what that means. That because it's in the form of discounts, and you still need more stock in those regions. So, some really interesting pieces uh, there, and lots of tips and tricks which you can give you. Uh, and we've had on our own um, hack series, and I know Nick's um, been involved in some of those. So. Um, really pleased to be being be involved in the in the panel here. Hope we didn't go on too long. Uh, excited to help any seller from outside the UK and the EU who's keen to grow their online business uh, and make uh, make a go of the European market. So thanks for having me, and thanks to the rest of the panel for listening to me as well. Um, and any questions? Yeah, I'd be delighted to, 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 to delighted to call, to answer. Uh, thank you, Ricky. I love the G's Gold Expansion Ticket. It looks very good. You know. G we even yeah, we even have the uh, Willy Wonka chocolate bars uh, of the golden ticket with uh, with our details on. So we had to, if you catch catch next time we see you at an expo, give us a shout and we'll uh, make sure we get you tipped up with a Wonka bar. Okay, so see guys, you know Rick and G, they also already have the ticket for you. Just need to go and take it. No, we're not gonna. So okay, guys. So I know Alex and Omar have been waiting. Omar has been taking selfies. They're going viral already. But <laughs> Alex now is gonna talk for some boring stuff ricky mentioned something very very important where is your warehouse located because uh, from personal experience i know that the one thing that you need to do the client orders you need to deliver them as soon as possible otherwise they're going to change their mind or or the husband is going to see what the wife has been shopping and they uh, cut his credit her credit card so logistics is very important you know it was the hardest thing that uh, i had to deal with when i was managing my brand so thanks alex thanks for your patience Tell us more about you and what you guys are doing. I know it's myself, but tell us to the other parts in the speaker. So thanks again for him, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, very much. Uh, I'll uh, share my screen now. Uh, okay, hope you you see it. Uh, everything works, right? Yeah, I see. So it's uh, great to be here with all of you. A lot of professionals from logistics. Uh, already you saw the golden tickets and different solutions and a lot of materials that I think you should uh, analyze and think about. I would I would focus on something that uh, we're doing in WAPI for the past six years, and this is the Europe. Uh, my, my presentation today is called How to Op Optimize Fulfillment and Logistics Costs, but of course, it is not only about logistics costs, it's about Europe in general. As you have already heard today, uh, I'll tell you about myself in a few minutes. As you heard, Europe is huge and I can add exactly the same. Europe is huge, more than 700 million people. We saw the presentation now that the, uh, the market with more than 800 billion uh, Euro, Euro annually, yes? So uh, it is twice more than uh, United States, actually. The only problem that I'm trying to solve for the past six years is that he, when you go to USA, you just go to Amazon and you get 60% of the market. When you go to Europe, you go to Amazon, you get 8 9% of the market. That's all. Because if you want to get all the Europe, you have to go multi-channel. If you want to go to Europe successfully, you need to understand that Europe is broken into parts, into countries. Uh, Omar is helping to solve it with the translations and localizations. I'm uh, helping to solve it with logistics. You can see the map. We've got uh, uh, 11 warehouses now. So we've got the, we're building a fulfillment network because uh, 
first thing that we found the how you can save costs and how you can win e-commerce in Europe, you have to move from cross-border to a local deliveries. So of course, uh, you can go to Europe, uh, find the 3PL in Germany or in Netherlands, uh, sign a contract and they'll send your goods all over the Europe. But if you want to really win the competition, it's not enough because products from Germany to, uh, to Poland, to France, to Spain, to Italy, they can go for two, three, four, five days. It, it depends on your luck. Uh, if you want to be very fast, you have to be located in every market, in Germany, in Spain, in Italy, in Poland, in Netherlands, in UK, you have to have their warehouse. And if you have so many warehouses, now starts the way how to manage all of it, how to control all of it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We were uh, developing the system and we have created uh, one, how it was already told today, one-stop shop, one place, one dashboard for you, one virtual where you have virtual warehouses all over the Europe. You see the inventories. You see uh, the, the tracking, the deliveries, everything in one place. We help you to manage all of it. For example, you can save money uh, not only on um, cross-border versus local deliveries. In Europe, you've got not only a lot of marketplaces, but a lot of courier services. So here is only a small part of it. Yes, you've got Carrells Express in Spain, SDA in Italy, you have GLS, you have Ger Hermes, you have InPost, you have DP, you have a lot of them. Yodel Royal Mail in UK. You, uh, and every courier service has special uh, uh, offers, products, territories where they can win. You, so, so if you can manage the prices, if you can manage the courier services, you will definitely get the better price. You will win the money. You will be more efficient. But to do so, you have to know about all of them and you have to integrate with all of them. You have to find the, or you have to find the partners who are integrated with them and you have to know and have tools to manage all of it. Of course, you can go to only to Amazon, get 10% of the European market, and you will not need you will not need this uh, work with couriers because Amazon is doing everything. Yes, for you, this pan-European system that Amazon has created that helps you uh, with moving your stocks all around the Europe. What Amazon is doing, choosing the right couriers in every country. So. Uh, when, when WAPI, we came to the market, Amazon has already created it. And we, are, we have now created this not only for Amazon. So if you want to work with Allegro in Poland, C-Discount in France, Kaufland, Otto, Ball, Frugo, uh, Emac, actually the marketplaces that in their countries, they have majority of the market. Like Allegro has more than 80% of Polish market. Otto and Kaufland, the same together, they have majority in Germany. C-Discount has majority in France. Ball.com wins Amazon in Netherlands. So this local marketplaces, you, you can get a huge advantage uh, against your competitors if you don't only sell on Amazon, but also go on the local marketplaces. Of course, you can try to use multi-channel fulfillment on Amazon, but believe me, you will not like it because it's absolutely not cost efficient. So what we have here more, uh, the inventory. Yes, you have to, to control the inventory. And when you're multi-channel, uh, it is very, very high risk of going out of stock. So AI, uh, the system must uh, forecast the demand, forecast your sales, help you to show on which warehouse where you're about or, uh, to go out of stock in two weeks time, three weeks time, and it has to give you suggestions. Uh, our system is not yet like Amazon, uh, Pan Europe, uh, moving your stock without informing you. Okay, so our system now give you suggestions, and you together with us you can decide and move the stock so that you avoid the situation with uh, out of stock. But 
when you uh, do this, you will save a lot of money because as you know, out of stock is bad reviews. Yeah, if you even want to send the goods, there is, there is some situations like you don't have this stock in the local country, for example, in Germany, but you have it in Poland and you decide to fulfill the order from Poland and you just lose the money because cross-border is always more expensive than the local delivery. So you have to have a very sophisticated uh, order management and processing, processing system that will help you uh, to easily like crack this European uh, diversity and make it easy for you so that you see all the stocks everywhere, you know how to, uh, where to put your stock so that it will be efficient, what couriers to choose so that it will be price efficient. Uh, you'll manage to de deliver your parcels very fast and it doesn't matter where it is in Spain or in Baltic states or in UK. Uh, of course, you will need uh, to have partners like uh, with, 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 with tax and with uh, bookkeeping and with accounting. There are a lot, a lot of challenges, but hopefully we have a specialist here who can help you. And of course, the localization. Uh, because every country in Europe, like you, you, need, you need to support people in French if you want to go to France. You need to support people in Spanish if you want to go to Spain. The same with Italy, Romania, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you will have a lot of challenges, but uh, the one that is about the logistics, WAPI Fulfillment Network, we definitely can help you with this one. Uh, of course, you have not only the marketplaces, you have the D2C deliveries uh, and, and Amazon. And if you want to go actually to Amazon in Europe and in the UK, it is not so sophisticated that going to multi-channel. So you need to have two warehouses, like one in UK is better to have two warehouses, one in UK, one in Germany, uh, three PLs. Everything what I was telling about how he's doing it in USA, pretty pretty the same system in Europe with, with small differences. And you store your goods at three PLs in UK and Germany, and then just replenish the Amazon FBA uh, warehouses. So what we have more here uh, with uh, uh, WAPI, the, yes, of course, you will have a lot of integration costs. Uh, you can uh, try to do everything manually, but then you will spend the money on salaries. You need to find the integrators. They also are asking for money or uh, when you're working with WAPI, we are uh, like IT companies. So we integrate with everybody step by step by our own and we don't charge you absolutely anything. So when you go with us, you get not the only logistics partner, but also the integrator. Also, what we are doing for you in WAPI, we've got uh, our community where we're searching for specialist professionals that are covering other things in Europe uh, that you will need to concur. Please, uh, it's absolutely for free, no charge. Just if you find some uh, information there that will help you, we will be just be very, very pleased. That's my contacts here. If you have any questions about the logistics, uh, about myself was in the beginning, I will finish with it. So I am CEO and co-founder of WAPI. I'm Alexander Friedman. I'm in logistics since I'm 13 years old. I was uh, every summer, I was working at the warehouse in my life. I did everything connected in logistics, customs, uh, brokerage, freight forwarding, ARC, rail, trucks, LTL, small shipments, big shipments, everything in logistics. So you can ask me any question and I will be super glad to help you to conquer the Europe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank Nick, for giving me the thank, 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 for Thanks, it. Alex. I was into brick and welding once. My father has a construction business, so one thing and, and of, of all it like a full track of 20 tons of brick. So I've yeah. done that, but this is the only logistic part that I've done. So the last <laughs> but not the least, thanks Omar for the for all the sales office and for your huge patience. Now we're gonna talk about the last thing, vocalization and translations, because if you did all the 
I think before that correctly, if you decide to skip the last part, you're gonna waste a lot of money. So Omar is gonna tell you why local localization is very important and why you need to use like local or local translator. So Omar, thanks again. Tell us more about you and what you guys are doing. Great, thank you. Thank you all for, for being here and for being still here. Uh, it was a great webinar so far, lots of information. Um, you know, we, we, it's, it's great that Nick has this live on YouTube because we need all the information to break it down and really um, take everything little by little because, you know, with all this information, you can really make a, lot, make a difference, make a lot of money and improve your business if you at a professional, super professional level, like a super high corporate ladder or you're just a small business, you can definitely um, improve your business. Um, Alex, I will try to share now. Can you luck, share? Luck, my friend, <laughs> I, I need to de-share? Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, now cool. I think I'm in. Yes, I think you are. I'm in here. Okay, luck, perfect. Thank you. Um, play. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so like I already said, oh, this is disturbing here. That's okay. Like I already said, so we need we have to know you have to know your customer and speak their language. This is not only when you come from the US or anywhere else. This is really. Um, for the whole world and it's not only about translating or you know like translating the words in another language it's about the localization right now and i think i will give you a few examples uh, about this um as well uh, just you know i got a new one in my head very quickly so my name is uh, omar angry i'm the ceo and co-founder of marginbusiness.com um, we're the leading localization and optimization agency for e-com sellers uh, for the last 10 years um, we are based in the United Arab Emirates, um, beautiful place, really. Um, we have so far translated and optimized and localized about over 100,000 listings over the past 10 years. Um, it's not about the number, it's about the quality, obviously, but I just wanted to give you a little overview about how um, we work and um, what the sellers, what the kind of sellers are we working with um, in order to uh, have such numbers. Um, so, okay, let's let's begin uh, very quickly. In the last, I would say the last years, it got more and more important to have really something um, tailored for a customer which you are targeting. So that means you don't you don't just go to 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 Alibaba anymore and you just get a product and then you throw it out there and you know, you try to make a hundred thousand. We're not in 2010 anymore. You have to localize your products and the services in the European Union region or anywhere else. Tailor offerings and specific needs and preferences of uh, for consumers. So, if you go in front of your consumer, I have a, have a very good example. For example, Lexus did this very well. Um, Burger King is doing this as well, very well. You have uh, just uh, in the UAE, for example, there is now. You have in traditional clothes somebody coming out of a very nice villa, um, going into going in front of his Lexus, and everything is like localized. You know when you see the villa, it's from Dubai. You know when you see the clothes, it's somewhere from the Middle East. If you don't know exactly, there is different headscarves and different things. But anyway, you know that it's from the Middle East. And when you, when you see the car, uh, the size of the car and how the car looks, you know that it's not from Europe. It's from the Middle East. So. These are very some very, very um, important points we have to consider. So adapt the language, use the marketing materials, and collect with your local audience. Even if it means for every single country, every single country, country has a local audience, and nobody reacts the same to anything. What is very important is as well to demonstrate the commitment and understanding and meeting the needs of consumers, enhanced reputation and position companies as trusted partners. So what means is that you need to be a trusted source. Um, when, when people see your product, they need to say, okay, this one, I trust this product because my children or my family or me, I'm going to use it and I'm going to use it on a daily basis. This is super important. Um, 
benefits of localization on Amazon, EU, and worldwide, because we talked there. You, obviously, I have a you here and here. Um, speak to your customer's language. We don't just speak about a language. We, sp we speak about the human being in general. We speak about the needs. We speak about everything, what is around there. So this implies not just your spoken language, but also the interpretation of text that influences their decision to purchase a product with confidence. So um, like we already know, we are in the zombie scrolling era. That means your first bullet point might not go very far, especially when you're on mobile. So we're looking at pictures, maybe some text on the picture. We're looking at the first bullet point if anybody goes to the first bullet point and we're looking at the title. So you need to capture your customers um, in the first few seconds. Um, I spoke with Alexander, I think is, uh, I forgot the name. I, I think I forgot the name, but anyway, um, I have been on a webinar and they mentioned uh, we have like six seconds with the video to capture the audience of our consumers. So very important that we um, um, do this Really, uh, our tools that we have to not to not to really make sure that we hit the customer's attention in the first few seconds. Um, increased visibility. Um, this involves optimizing the product listing. So, advertising, uh, utilizing marketing strategies, and improves the search ranking and exposure of your products on the platform. So, not only localization as well. Very important, localized or native keywords. Um, how do customers search in my language or in the language I'm selling to the customer to? I need to have people who understand that, who know how to search that. So we have that. We can help with that. Um, anyone anyone uh, who lived abroad knows exactly that there might be 10 different words uh, uh, for, for, for maybe for one product, you know, and you need to find out which is the good product. And when you are not from that region or when you're selling in that region, you need to all have this, all of this information in order to um, uh, attract this type of customer. Um, improve customer experience. Customers are more likely to buy your product that are tailored in their language, currency, and cultural preferences. So as well adapt the currency, the price, uh, cultural preferences as well. Photos cannot be the same in, in, in every country, maybe in Europe, yes. But as well, there is a Germany is cold. Um, Spain is, uh, Southern Spain is hot. So we have to have, we have to adapt ourselves when we sell, unfortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, we can change pictures within the European Union right now. So this is definitely something um, we can change uh, there. And all of this will give us about 50% more. This is what we have seen. If you, um, obviously you need before have everything in place, the whole other things, what we had, what we just talked about, um, taxes, logistics, uh, high, uh, amazing software. If you have everything in place and then you add uh, the localization, um, there is definitely a 50% increase um, of, your, uh, of your sales there. So um, competitive advantage. By localizing your listing, you can gain competitive advantage over other sellers who haven't localized their listing. This, is, this goes specifically for the big I met Chinese sellers who are plastering... Um, all over the world with, with, with products directly from the manufacturing side and obviously make a lot of money, but they could make a lot more money. But if you can get an improved product and sell as well, the customer will more likely buy from you because he feels there's some warmth in there. There is, there is, there is a passion in there. Um, there is a customer service who understands what you want from them. Um, everything is tailored towards the customer. And this is uh, many countries will need, still need to learn that. But I have seen a high, high improvement level from that side as well. So, but still, we can, we can make a big, big difference in that. Um, the PPC advantage. Um, this, this is definitely when, we, when, we com when you combine your, uh, your listings uh, with Eva, um, you have the PPC advantage as well. Because when you take our keywords and, and uh, Eva's keywords and compare them, you can even pull down the best keywords and put them into your software. Um, only native speakers can really search for good keywords, no matter what you heard. Um, okay, there's good data analysts and they can pull you out some keywords, but you always need these native speakers in order to be 100% sure and even if they are green or uh, red means super good and green means a little bit less, but still they have sales, 
Um, better take a hundred sales for sure than going and and swim with the big sharks and and try to get bitten and lose a lot of money. So this is always my my approach in that as well. Um, this is just a quick uh, um, example that I have. And um, this is a product out of the UK. Um, I think from what I've seen, super good. Price is super good. Um, they are as well UK based, um, but they know their customers. So they are, they are uh, it's just perfect. It's a perfect listing for me. You have everything you need. Um, they are, um, they mentioned as well, uh, we're from the UK. So they definitely make a lot of sales. Um, you can see their sales, 30 day sales. They have about uh, 2,100 in sales. Um, and the product is as well a very trending product. So really good. Now we have the second one is as well from the UK, but they, def they definitely do a big mistake. Obviously their photos are not good. So it's not localized. It don't speak to the customer, especially for women. This is super important that we, that we talk about something here, which, which really has an impact on them. Not only that it's a fancy, you know, outside looks good, looks, uh, you know, it needs to have a community. It needs to have, it needs to have something what they, what they can relate to and having like three photos here, you know, a little text. It's, it's not the best, you know, I don't talk about the product. Maybe the product is effective, you know, but they definitely need to do a little bit more in their marketing. Um, here's two other products. Um, the, what you might not see is that the, 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 the second one here, the WellGuard, what I've seen is that they actually uh, source from China, which, which I was very surprised because all the other products are from the UK. And you can see here 974 in this one and 851 from this one. So that means um, this company, if they're Chinese or if they're UK, I'm not sure about that, but I can tell you, they need to show that they are sourcing from China. So their approach and they know their customer. This is 100% clear because although the product comes from China, they definitely sell a lot and they know how to do it. Um, maybe it's the price as well because it's uh, not so expensive, but still, I think um, when you sell in the European Union and UK and even in the US, you need to attract your local customer. And with the colors and everything, they definitely attracted here, um, the UK, and they have amazing sales over there. Um, okay, now we come to uh, the last part. Um, do's and don'ts when you're entering new market. Now, now you know, normally I don't mention this anymore, but I've seen, still seen sellers, which are actually using Google Translate, you know, like, like no, don't do that. You're going to mess up everything that you have created. You know, all the money that you have spent before will be gone the drain because, you know, who want to who read through Google Translate, you know? Um, no, not me. And uh, as well, pictures the same. You don't want to have generated, the same as we have AI generated pictures, which uh, in the future might come, but right now they look horrible uh, if anyone has have tried them yet. So um, Amazon automatic translations as well, not generated products, not anymore, my opinion. And what I've seen so far is that it don't work anymore. Um, sell, sell with the wrong intention means if you really want to only out for money, right now it's not the time to only go for money. You really have a passion, a purpose, and you need to help. You help. You need to help people in this world in order uh, to make uh, uh, make money. So solve a problem, and if it's your passion, even better. You know, so people can identify you with the brand with your product. Um, localization is the best what you can do. Hire an agency. Don't don't do don't do things on your own. Really, hire an agency like Hi, like Alex, like Hello Tax. You know, I've tried to do my ta the taxes on my own. I recommend not to do it. Go get Hello Tax. You know, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get problems. So really, uh, that's one thing. Uh, even if it costs you money, I'm I'm really serious about this. Just you know, spend that money, and you're gonna be a lot a lot ch more chilled. You know, and you can focus on what is really important. So create a brand. You know, generate products, create a brand, create a brand, products with purpose. I said it already. Very important. Um, conclusion, when entering foreign markets, it's, it's, it's important to avoid shortcuts as they can lead um, to missed opportunities for success. Foreign markets are not simply another location to throw your products at, but can instead be a pathway to even greater prosperity. Um, I'm, I'm closing this uh, uh, with this sentence here. Um, and thank you all for your attention. Uh, I think 
that was uh i hope it was not too much for uh, for everyone who who attended here right now so very quick we are marginbusiness.com you can find us at marginbusiness.com we're very active on linkedin um we are doing the listing optimization and translation services it don't stop there we do as well translation for for everything else but we are really focused since years on the amazon world and as well uh on noon uh, in the uae um so you can like I said, it's very important to have powerful content, optimization, and localization services. So we help everyone around the world. If you have questions, just let me know. And there is a very special offer for uh, for um, the very small sellers. Uh, one to five listings. We have a new AI tool, which is amzlistai.com. And um, we offer at the moment a free listing and one free language for each localization package bought. Um, value is up to 999 US dollars. And I think Hello Tax or Nick has as well a super good offer for you all. This is just a quick squeeze in, but the main message I wanted to bring through is really um, make sure that you understand your customer. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, it was under 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. T t thanks, Omar. You know, time is relative, you know, summer 10, summer 20. <laughs> but we're, we're not we're not perfect. No, the one thing that uh, Omar said, you know, there is stuff that you can try to do yourself and there is stuff that you shouldn't do yourself. And the people who don't listen to our advice, sometimes they get in a lot of trouble. A seller that I spoke with two years ago decided to do the VT on by themselves and they messed up <laughs> the VAT compliance for 200 brands. Now they're running back to us. So, I mean, everybody hates taxes. Nobody wants to pay money, but sometimes you need to pay money so you can save paying much more money in the future. But I thank you, everybody. Now we have a few questions because we have the Champions League semifinal in 20 minutes. So we need to be quick. <laughs> Who's going to be, go to the final, Real Madrid or Man City? This is the first question from the Q&A session. No answers? Okay. I'm going to say Man City, I hate Real Madrid. So let's go with the with the real questions. The first one is from uh, Puru Sharma. Uh, let, let me see what is the question. Hope we will get a recording or access of this presentation. One, yes, we're going to we're gonna send that after the webinar. The second question is from Jelly Owayani. Uh, what does one need to do if one wants to store goods in in other EU markets and fulfill it to the customer base in those countries using Amazon. Moreover, if I reside in Germany, I want the support to deliver those goods in the country, for example, Italy, do I need to pay taxes in the country or what do I need to do and how? Okay, I mean, your, uh, Julie, you know, your question is very complicated, but I'm gonna answer it as, as simply as possible. If you hold stock in any country in Europe, you need to have VAT, option number now. This is actually the one thing that it's always valid. The second option is if you hold stock in one market, let's say Germany, and you fulfill to all the other markets across the European Union, once you reach 10,000 euro, you can opt in for the so-called one-stop shop. And in this case, you'll be able to pay your taxes for the VAT only in Germany. You're gonna do the, you need to do the VAT registration and the OSS registration. You're gonna pay your VAT returns monthly or it always is uh, returns and reports quarterly, but you will be able to fulfill to B2C clients across the whole European Union only if you're not holding stock in the other markets. So in this case, you can do with one VAT and one OSS in one market. If you hold stock in multiple countries, you would need to have a VAT in each of those markets. Okay, so I hope this answers your question. The next question is from anonymous attendee. Is UK bigger than Germany in terms of sales? No they're not they used to be not anymore you know J japan is the second on amazon germany is the third one and the biggest one it's uh us of course so next question from joseph and i'm from senegal and i want to start my e-commerce business and i need a co to collaborate with all and how we can start this journey in my new business okay joseph book a call with me i'm gonna send you an email and we're gonna uh help you out to get started. We're going to help with the VAT and I'm going to connect with the other partners. So uh, let's go to the other questions. Let me just open the list from the people who sent us questions before the event. The, the first one is from May Lee. Can I translate my keywords from US, UK to, to sell in EU countries? That's for you, Omar. 
Um, no, absolutely not. We you need to do a, a keyword research for each and every single country. Okay, okay, thanks so much. Short and sweet. The next question is from just give me a second. Uh, okay. Do I need a legal US entity to start selling in the USA? Hi, this is for you. This is from Asha Singh. And I need to listen to you <laughs> to, to remember the question. Can you repeat okay, again? Okay, okay. Yeah. Do I need a legal US entity to start selling in the USA? A company. Oh, I guess yeah, you. no, no, that's a great question. It uh, you don't need, like you can always just send it uh, as long as you have a 3PL, uh, you can, it can be and the custom clearance, it can be taken care of. But uh, having a having a legal entity will make your life easy. Maybe not in the first uh, first phase, but having a legal entity will make a lot of sense to get a okay. better from Amazon. Okay, okay. So the short answer is not mandatory. The one Carson is if you, if you want to make your wife easier, do it. Okay, exactly. Thanks, thanks, Kai. Another question from Lars Anderson: Should I leave images and video in English on my EU listings? That's for you, Omar. Mm, if you if you can, you should not. If you can change it, don't do it. Uh, tr um, try to put it in every. Um, if if it's a. If it's don't if it don't cause you too much trouble, uh, change it. So normally you have tools today. You can you can really easy fix that one. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Some more. Next question. I think this is this one is for you, Alex from Matteo Rossi. What are the key things you should look for when choosing a free pill to work with when selling on both your own store and Amazon Marketplace? Alex, you're muted. Sorry, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, first of all, it's very simple. You have to search for the warehouse that knows what is e-commerce. It's number one. <laughs> if the warehouse 3PL didn't work with e-commerce, don't, don't even step there inside, okay? That's number one. Number two, if you want to work and with Amazon FBA and with D2C uh, sales from your website, the uh, 3PL must know how to prepare goods to Amazon and 3PL has to have uh, processes inside how to fulfill the D2C orders. So actually... Absolutely not all of them know how to do it. A little, little of them know both. Uh, majority know only one part or the second part. So if you want both, so search for the experienced warehouses. I think this is the, the, the two uh, main criteria. The third, of course, is price. Search for a better price. You okay. Uh, th thanks, Alex. So now we have another question from Anand Kapoor. What can we do with returns in the USA if we're not in the USA? I think that's for you, Kai. Yeah, that's exactly what I described because uh, for Indian sellers, Chinese sellers, European sellers, that's one of the biggest problems. So what I would do is, you know, just use the EVA returns management facility. And what you need to do is it's a it's a 30 seconds task. If, you know, you re, you basically switch from Amazon to our returns facility. So uh, we get all the returns, inspect them, and the ones which are in new conditions sent to Amazon, like new conditions, maybe based on your business decisions, sent to Amazon. And if it is maybe in a used condition, we can donate to the right people. It's a brand awareness thing. Or finally, it's not reusable at all. We can dispose. So using EVA returns management can help you if you are not in US. Okay, th thanks, Hi. Another question from Millie A. Is brand registry coming to EU account automatically from US? Yes. Okay, okay, so you don't need to do anything. That, that's the sh short answer. Yes. Okay, another question. Actually, it's not a question. Come on, anonymous attendee. I love all your webinars. That's good. It's good to be loved. <laughs> okay, Th thank you guys. You know, we enjoy them as well. Trying to make them shorter, but it doesn't always work out. Uh, a few more questions. So uh, from Jacob Mitchell, 
I am a US seller. What online marketplace do you recommend for an e-commerce seller and why when expanding in Europe? I think everybody of you guys can answer this question, more or less. Who would like to take? Okay, I'm going to start first. Uh, I mean, Amazon, it's really easy for non-new companies because just one thing, you know, if you're US seller, you get the VAT quicker in Germany. Don't need translation, central location. Amazon is going to collect the VAT and they're going to pay that to the tax authority. So the only thing that health tax is going to do, for example, we're just going to fire, fire uh, just register your VAT and file your reports and, and they're going to take care of the returns. Alex is going to take care of the logistics. Somewhere is going to take care of the uh, translation localization and the listing. Somewhere is going to reimburse all your uh, all the stuff that Amazon owes you from the states. So, and of course, this is this is the long story short, but Amazon is the easiest one. And then you should expand to other markets, you know, because I, and Amazon is still early. I live in Bulgaria. I order from Amazon Germany all the time. I get it here in two days. So even though, the, like Alex said, it's very fragmented, you know, Amazon is still the king. It's, it's still the king in Europe. Okay, do you guys would like to add something, you know, because in order to work with First, other marketplaces. As a uh, official service provider of Allegra for two years, I have to mention Allegra in Poland. <laughs> And also uh, the, all the other the biggest marketplaces, the local ones that I was telling you about today, uh, actually Bulgaria, Romania, you've got great EMAG there in your region. I think they deliver faster than Amazon. It must be just one day. Uh, I've, I've never ordered from you, Mark, by the way. <laughs> Right, and next time you will tell us how fast it will be, but I, I think it must be 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one thing why I mentioned Amazon is because, uh, you know, my I don't, I rarely order stuff only from Amazon. My wife orders stuff from local shops and marketplaces. Some of these guys didn't even bother to call for confirmation or to send the follow up email. They, the courier calls you in one week, hey, no, we have a delivery. Okay, where from? Okay, we, we forgot that we ordered from you guys. So, Amazon is just just too good. I mean, it's so easy to order. I mean, you know, my for example, I won't order a book. I cannot find it anywhere. I go to Amazon Germany, I buy the book, and I get it in one, one week. So, anyways, I mean, uh, uh, that's so, not just my there opinion. Was, there was uh, more. The C discount in France is very big, and the ball yeah. in Netherlands very big, and Kaufland and Otto in Germany are very big. That's that's yeah. the biggest that I know. Yeah, the, there is plenty. All of those guys are partners in you know, a Shopify, which is a platform. But like I said, probably Amazon is the easiest, you know, to get started with. Uh, another question, actually, we guys, we have a few, few more questions. Uh, the next one is from uh, Arjun Patel. What are the packaging and labeling requirements for international shipping? I think that's for you, uh, Alex, and you, Hi, if you, if you guys can, you can repeat answer it? that. Yeah, let just give me a second. Let me read it again. Uh, what are the packaging and labeling requirements for international shipping? Mm, there, no, there are a lot of uh, different requirements, like what you can, what you can send, and what you can't send. Yeah, I, I think the, the the question must be specified. Like, okay, okay, guys, please, please send. send the... Can I send alcohol, or can I send perfume, or can I send food? Uh, or uh, how big can be there's a huge amount of uh, requirements okay guys so send the more detailed question to alex after things you gonna answer that another question from puru sharma great po point on the warehouse and logistics alex how do you foresee a metaverse for wapi so the that reseller can visit and have a look and feel of the business i can be of help shaping those marketing solutions targeted webinars. So, okay, guys, for us, get in touch after after the webinar and we can discuss that with all of us. I just want to discuss the metaverse of WAPI, Nick. Yeah, man, <laughs> that too it. complicated. That, that's another oh, webinar. Question. That's yeah. another webinar. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I think we have one more question. The last one from Luca Bianchi, uh, European brand owner. Uh, how long does it take for an international brand to launch in the US? This is the last question. I how think, long, you know, uh, you can answer that. Hi. Yeah. How long does it take to launch in US? That's the question, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I mean, there are a couple of factors there, assuming every all the um, all the products are ready and shipped. Maybe it will take uh, six to eight weeks like uh, to 
arrive in US and, you know, packaging and labeling probably around six weeks if everything goes fine. And uh, then there is the other side that's more the logistic side. But it, in the meantime, in parallel, the listings needs to be created and, uh, you know, the advertising strategy needs to be uh, planned for the launch. I can say that, you know, it will not take too much time in parallel, six weeks for logistics is another six to eight weeks for, uh, you know, you know, launching on on Amazon. One of the things that we do, uh, because we are an advanced Amazon partner, uh, ad partner, we get always an Amazon rep, and we associate it uh, together with the team. So we always get a person from Amazon to help the launch to be successful because the there is a 60 days, like a honeymoon period, which is really the most important uh, for the brand to increase the sales velocity. Okay, thanks, Kai. And I think that that was the last question. So thank you everybody for staying with us till then. Thank you, Kai. Omar, Alex, and you know, the other speakers who had to go, they had some other uh, engagements. We have like 10K in giveaways. So if you guys want to expand in Europe, you know, the only thing is keeping you, I'm going to say some stupid word, like you need to have both to do that. So nobody's going to make the next step for you. We have all the resources, we have all the partners. We even provide you some funding and deals for that. So the, the next step is yours. So let's just wrap it up, guys. Who is going to uh, win tonight. Who's gonna go to the final? Real Madrid or 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 Man City? Let, let's hear free. Well, I, I have uh, no idea, really. I, I don't watch football. I'm sorry about that. You know. We are hockey watching, man, you're... We're watching hockey now. It's world championship happening in Latvia. I will go for yeah. Real Madrid. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I'll, yeah, I, I don't like both teams. I hope they both lose, but there is no such option. So let's say uh, I'm sick of Real Madrid and. Alex, hockey, you know, the best players are not playing, man. The, N the NHL is still in the playoffs. So who is playing I, in the world? I went on one game. I was watching Latvia, Canada, and Canada won with score 6-0. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. No, the, the puck is, successful. <laughs> yeah, the, the puck is too small. I can hardly see it. You know, I don't understand what's happening. So thank you guys again. Uh, it was great having you. You know, we had a lot of people, a lot of questions. We're going to cut the... The webinar into shorts. We're gonna share that. We're gonna share the recording to everybody. So, adios, muchachos. Have a good night. And thank you, thank you so much, Nick, for yeah. organizing it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks bye, for bye. organizing, Nick. Bye, bye. See all of you. Bye. 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 Bye.